Today I'm finally going to get around to doing my review of the Firefox Scout. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this stove, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I want to thank Steve at the Firebox Stove for sending out the Scout so that I could share it with you. So what did I mean about I'm finally getting around to it? Well, uh, I've had the stove in my possession now for, I'm going to say, 10 months. Thank you, Steve, for your patience and getting this review out. I've been following it since it first came up on Kickstarter a few years ago because it's not a new stove. In fact, lots of people have reviewed it. Lots of people have purchased it. A lot of people are sharing their experiences with this on the forums like Facebook. I got to be honest, when I first saw it, I wasn't interested. I didn't much like this stove. And I think that's looking back was for two reasons. First off, the I was waiting for the long rumored four inch firebox stove. People have been talking about this for quite some time. Something smaller than the original five inch uh, Gen 2 stove something smaller and when this came out I thought this was it and I was really disappointed I thought there would be much more to it now we now know the freestyle was that stove it was worth the wait for those of you who are not familiar with the freestyle uh, there's lots of reviews on it I have some I'll be doing more on it because the freestyle is really an amazing stove in terms of its design and versatility. This was something different, not a stopgap in between, but something different. It served a different niche altogether. This was intended, and it's one of its key features, to be an emergency use stove. This was not ever intended to be a long-term use stove. This was something that you could purchase at less cost than the other firebox stoves, because it is the least expensive in all of the lineup something you could put away in case of emergencies. You could load it with the fuels you're likely to need, pack it inside of a pot, put it in the trunk of your car or your get out bag or somewhere at home and have it at the ready should you need it. However, a lot of people have found that it serves well as an everyday use stove as well. The other thing is it looked to me like a glorified Ikea hobo stove. And I've got lots of experience with those. Those who have been following my channel know I have lots of those and modifications to it and that type of thing. And I thought, Really? This is just a square IKEA hobo stove? Until I got my hands on it. And then I started to appreciate the usual and now commonplace genius, if you can say such a thing, that Steve has for this type of thing. It is simple, but it is versatile. It has pros, but it has cons. So what I thought I would do is go through the stove, not in great detail. In fact, I'm only going to give you the specifications so that you get an idea of the stove. I'm going to talk about the different ways the stove can be used, but I'm not going to demonstrate all of them. I do have to build a fire in it, right? I can't do this video without at least building a fire in the stove. And I'm looking for my coffee, so that's what we'll do is we'll build a fire and I'll boil some water. But there are a great number of ways this stove can be used, all of which I can't show you in this video. So what we'll do is we'll come in a little closer. I'll give you some close-ups on it. We'll talk about its uh, specifications, its design, its materials, that type of thing. And then, of course, we'll do the demonstration. All right, I put the scope back in its stuff sack, and I'm going to take everything out that is in here to show it to you and put it all together and assemble it for you, of course. But first thing you need to know is this is the Scout Performance Kit. So not everything, well, there, I guess there are two versions, the basic version and the Scout Performance Kit. The F Performance Kit has all the extra accessories that make this much more versatile. You don't have to have it to make the stove useful and, and workable. But I'll tell you, it's worth the money, the little extra that you need to spend to get the performance kit and get the components that you'll see in this. Now, the other thing is, before I take it out, is one of the things that Steve has said is that this works well paired with a 16 centimeter zebra. So that's what I wanted to show. This inside of the pot and the lid on. Get the laces inside, that is. All right, so there it is inside of a 16 centimeter zebra. Now, the only thing is you can't get the pan that comes with the zebra down inside with the lid on like this. So in order to take the pan with you, if you really want to carry it, you have to put it inside there and it will go inside. I have to take the lids off and it release the, uh, the clips on the side of it, but you can fit it in like that with the handle up and then put it all inside of a stuff sack of some type. And of course, Steve does sell this uh, 16 centimeter zebra with bags and everything else. So if you want to put it all together in one complete package, everything is available to you at thefireboxstove.com. Um, this is my own 
pot. This is not one from Steve's, uh, and uh, you can probably tell that because this one does not have the hole drilled for the thermometer if you're going to do baking with it. I think that's a great addition as well. I'll be upgrading to that and, uh, you know, so I can do some baking. I, I like baking in these, and this is the one that you really want to have for baking because of its size. But that's a, that's a side story. So what's the benefit of doing this? Everything is together. Everything is here. Now, there is room inside. Let's see if I can show you. There is some additional room inside, so you can get a fire kit and maybe a few other things inside at the top of this. Uh, you just can't get that the plate that goes with it. The point is, everything is here. So if you, now it's a bit heavy, yes, for a bug out bag, but not if there's two of you or three of you, this would certainly serve everybody in the party. And one of the things that may be hardest to come by in a bug out situation is clean water. Yes, you can take a filter, but you, if your option is, is to do a lot of boiling of water. If you're gonna to have to boil a lot of water, you want a big pot, and that's what the 16 centimeter pot is all about. So that aside, it's a great combination. Of, that's the way I brought it out today. I wouldn't normally bring a, bring a 16 centimeter pot out into the woods just for demonstration, but I wanted to show you that. All right, pot comes out. I will, pot will come back in when it's time to build a fire and boil some water for my coffee. So again, here is in, in stuff sack, inside of the stuff sack is the unit all packed down. The bag is nice uh, because there's, there's a few accessories inside of this. It's great to have the bag to put them in when you're using the stove so of course they don't get lost. Now one of the key features about this is that there are two of these, I don't know what you want to call them, box type things, one for the top, one for the bottom, and they're interchangeable so you can use them either way. You can see this has never seen fire, the one on the bottom has, but this one has never seen fire. I want to address this right now uh, only because I think it's worth addressing, is I have seen people recommend you could use this for boiling water in. Yeah, I guess you could. I don't think it would be my choice. I'll talk about that why in a minute. One is the construction. It is two-piece construction, so there are some crevices down inside. You could boil water in this. I wouldn't cook food in it, but you could boil water in it, but I would recommend against it, and I'll tell you why in a minute. What it does do is keep everything nice and compact and in one place inside. So here's the other one on the bottom. Primary use for this is to be turned upside down and the stove placed on top of it. Now you can use it like this and what happens then is it lifts the stove off of the ground so that when you feed sticks in through the feed hole on the side they go in an upward angle which is the best position to have them, if you're using long sticks that is, for burning them so that the sticks are not laying flat, they're actually pointed up at an angle so the flame can climb them. You can also use it, invert it with the stove down inside. Now the benefit of this of course is that you're restricting airflow off of the bottom and that can be good for a different couple of different situations we'll get into in a moment. All right, so let's get going with what's inside. Instructions. Don't lose them. I mean that, especially if this is for your bug out bag. If it's something that you're going to use every day, after a while, you can probably get rid of this, but because you've gotten used to doing all the things inside, it's pictorially laid out, all the different aspects and versatility of how the stove can be used. But if you're not using this stove every day, keep your instructions because uh, there'll come a time when you want to find out how do I set up the alcohol stove? How do I set it up for solid fuel? How do I set it up for charcoal or pellets? That's all in here, okay? So put that aside. When you receive the stove, you get three of these, and this is the fuel puck. I have mine inside of a plastic bag. It's the, um, I've gone through the other two. This is my last one, and it's only half of the fuel puck. I guess I can bring it out to show you. It's a wax and wood and proprietary component type of material. You've seen these, Steve uses them all the time, and I can understand why. They break off into reasonable sized chunks, they light up very readily, and they will get your fire going, or they can be used as a standalone fuel. You can cook over these all by themselves. You just break it up for the size you want, treat it as a solid fuel like you might a Nesbitt tablet, and use it gets a little smoky, so I don't think it's something I would do often. Of course, my pot's already pretty dirty. I don't think it will hurt a Denny. But you get three of these in the performance kit. Put that aside. The other components, I don't want to lose them as they fall out here. All right, 
Two, stainless steel pins. These are used for positioning your Trangia alcohol burner, but I'm sure there are other uses for them as well. The holes on the sides of the stove are specifically placed for uh, allowing the Trangia to be set at different heights, or this. This is the plate. The, this plate has two purposes. One, you can see the depression in the center. That's for solid fuel, like an Esbit tablet. It keeps it from melting and going all over the place as they sometimes will. But this is also your plate for use with wood pellets. So you can set it at different heights inside of the stove, depending on how much wood pellets you have to burn. You don't want to use half a cup of wood pellets and have it all the way at the bottom. You want it up nice and close, fairly close to the top. Uh, you can also use it for charcoal in terms of getting just the right height if you're using a limited amount of charcoal rather than filling the whole stove up. You can also use it for reduced space if for burning wood. If all you want is a tiny little fire for a quick boil up rather than fill the whole stove full of wood, you know, you can limit the amount. So it's a floor plate, burn plate, whatever you want to call it, with multiple uses as well. So these Pins are going to be set at different heights for either the trangia or for the plate to hold it up. Set those aside. And the last thing are these, and these are the crossbars or pot stands. Now, the stove does not absolutely require it. There is so much ventilation around the top that you can lay a pot directly on top of this and it will work. I will tell you from experience, it does dampen down the flames. It will smoke a little bit more, but it also uh, slows everything down, which isn't always a bad thing. So you don't need these, but by using them, you can get a lot more performance out of the stove itself. In fact, let's just show you how these things work. So like regular pot stands, they go together to form a crossbar like this. But can you see on the end, there's a notch right here? Well, that notch locks them into the, the box itself into the firebox. So you would put them in at a bit of an angle like this and turn them until they are locked in. So now you can see it's supporting, self-supporting. So they are locked in and not likely to fall off. I think that's a great innovation in pot stands to lock it in like that. Only thing I'll say is if you have built your fire in and didn't put your cross stands on before you lit it, you're going to have trouble putting them on after the fact. So just take that into consideration that you want to get these locked on before you get the fire roaring inside of this thing. All right, so what's next to show you? First off, let's just talk about the construction. I guess maybe what I should do is go through the specifications first. All right, as far as the specifications go, let's go through them quickly. Height, top to bottom, is 5 inches or 12.8 centimeters. Across the sides in either direction is 4.3 inches or 11 centimeters. Burn chamber depth is 4.3, so it's pretty much a cube in just about every way. Weight, and this was for everything. All in was one pound. 1.5 ounces or 494 grams. So it would be a little less for the regular base model than it is for this with everything in it. So, okay, so that is the actual specifications. Now, here's something really important I want to talk about, and that is the construction of this in terms of materials. This is not made from stainless steel. It is made from carbon steel. It is made of carbon steel that has been tin plated to reduce rust. That's what I'm talking about when, it, when I say it wasn't intended for long-term use. It wasn't intended or should not be as durable as a good stainless steel stove is, as are the other stoves from Steve at Firebox Stove or the titanium versions. The other thing is this was simple construction. It is all pieced together and pushed into place um, you know, it's, it's just not fancy, I guess you might say. You can see there's seams here and there's seams on the bottom. And so it's, it's a simple, inexpensive construction. And that's why they can be offered at a reduced price. It was, again, the mission of this was for emergency use. I guess the best question is, okay, if it was intended for emergency use, how come people are using it as their everyday stove, as their one and only? Well, that's a good question. That's the part of the reason why it took me so long to get to this point to want to review it. I wanted to see just how many fires I could have in this and how it stood up. Now, I have nowhere near the number of fires I've heard people on Facebook and YouTube claim to have used this stove for. I probably have, I'm going to say, 50 fires in it. i at home, out here in the woods, but just building up different fires with charcoal, with wood pellets. I, I don't count using the solid fuel or alcohol as a fire because I wanted to see what kind of 
uh, effect having extended hot burns have on this? And the answer is very little, surprisingly little. It's, it's just, I, I don't understand why something that's made of tin ploid plated steel is lasting so long. Having said that, there is rust. There is some warping in the bottom, just minor to be quite honest, it's not, not serious. Actually, you get warping in pretty much every stove to some degree or another. It's more, more a matter of does it affect the function of the stove. So as I look it over, there are spots where there are rust on this. Have I been taking care of it? Well, I clean it out, I oil it, but at the same time, it's still not stainless steel. So any moisture at all on it is eventually going to cause rust in this. Oh, okay. Um, let's just set it up and put a burn in it so that as we have the fire going, we'll talk a little bit more about it. All right, a couple of things just before I light the stove up. First off, I'm not going to be using the fire starter that came with the stove. The reason is, is I have birch bark. I live in an area that has lots and lots of birch trees. There is birch bark laying all over the ground. That's what I'm going to reach for first time every time if I have that as an option. And fortunately, I do. The other thing is I have watched Steve and other people do this as well, where they'll set the stove up like they do often with the five inch firebox with a piece of wood, maybe four or five inches in diameter, split, turned around, so you get a Swedish fire torch inside of the stove. That's great. I, you know what? I think that's not just a cool trick. It is an effective way of cooking. It burns for a long time. Very intense flame coming up through the center opening. It's great, but it requires wood processing. I like my wood stoves for this reason. Everything inside of this and all of these were picked up off of the ground right around my feet. I didn't have to take a saw out. I can literally snap everything up. That's the way I like to use my stoves. Not to say that it isn't fun sometimes to do the other, but uh, this is, to me, the, uh, how should I say, the basic way, the way that I'm going to use it most often. All right, so those two things out of the way, let's light her up. A little bit of birch bark sticking out of the bottom. Nothing fancy here. Wait for that to migrate inside where there's considerably more birch bark inside. On top of the birch bark are the end dead twigs from the lower branches of a nearby spruce tree. And on top of that, there's just little pieces of wood that I picked up off of the ground. Now, it's dry here right now, so everything you pick up off of the ground is gonna be ready for um, fuel right away. It's not wet. Had it been wet, I would have been breaking branches, dead branches off of trees or looking for some standing, dead standing that was upright and dry or maybe have to split stuff out. But as long as I can find fuel off of the ground, that's what it's all about. So you can see how quickly it's taken off. Now you can see the fuel I have that I'll go to as this stuff starts to burn down. And I'll be feeding that in through these holes here. Uh, not right away. I'm going to let it really catch on and wait for the fuel to start to go down a little before I start feeding them in. And I'll show you how that works and why it's so effective. I think now I'm probably ready to put my pot of water on. You can see what I mean. If you were to try to put those cross stands on now, uh, you wouldn't. That's just that simple. Now, there were some things stuck to the bottom of this pot, which is always going to smoke a little. But you can see, because of the cross stands, this is working very well. There is some smoke. I guess if I had left it a few minutes longer, it would have been a little bit cleaner when the fuel is a bit more engaged and the bottom of the pot wasn't so dirty. Would have been more smoke had I not had the crossbars and I put it directly on top. But you can see flame coming out of the holes around the top, so that gives you an idea how well designed it is. All right, really, there's nothing more to see until my coffee's ready. I can probably start feeding one or two of these sticks in. Again, minimal processing. Pick them up off the ground and snap them. And they go up at an angle, as I mentioned, and having gone up at an angle, they are... Uh, engaging more of the flame upwards like that. All right, I guess the only thing to do, a couple minutes time, my water will be ready, I'll make coffee, and then we'll wrap this video up. And hopefully you can hear me over the wind. The wind is picking up here. My water is hot. Just making sure those sticks are in a little bit. All right, let's get the coffee ready first. Simple pour over today. Pour over may be simple, but the coffee is never simple. Rampage coffee. Again. 
Oh yeah, nice. Two. Make it nice, a little stronger today. All right, I don't think I'm gonna need a glove for this. No, nope, no glove. You see how clean it's burning now? Once it gets going, you really, it doesn't uh, put out a lot of smoke. Now here's the trick, 16 centimeter zebra, trying to do a pour over, which is all about finesse. It's going through though. It's not the finesse of a nice pour spout that you can go around and around on the bed of grounds inside of the pour over. Might help to do that a little bit, we'll see. Oh, just a little bit more. All right, and I have some water left over for cleanup. Great, okay, once it's poured through, we'll close this video up with a few closing thoughts. Oh, that's nice. I'm gonna keep it short so I can still enjoy this while it is warm. Okay, so the Firebox Scout, my final thoughts. What I have to do is go back to the beginning of the video where I talked about this stove being intended as an emergency use stove. That's what Steve built it for. It wasn't meant to be a long-term everyday use stove that people would be their one and only. Having said that, that's exactly what's happening. A lot of people are buying the stove and having multiple, multiple fires in it. If that's the case, then it changes this from an emergency use stove or plus an emergency use stove to a budget wood stove. Is it a good budget wood stove? Because let's face it, some of the other firebox stoves, it's not that they're expensive, it's just that they're outside of some people's budgets. And this is an alternative that some people, this is what they can afford. Is it a good alternative to the expensive ones? Yes, actually it is. If you have a budget that is restricted somewhat and you're not a person who is handy with tools or doesn't want to go through the process of making one of your own from an IKEA utensil strainer, then this is a great option because it is all well thought out. Everything is done for you. It performs exactly as it's intended. I still have reservations about its long-term use. It's still made of carbon steel, tin-plated steel. It's not made of stainless steel. Again, it was not designed for long-term use. People are getting away with it. I've had a fair number of fires in this. I think if that's what you want to do with it, then maintenance is key. You really have to clean this out and oil it down to keep it from rusting the longer you have it. It's not burning through, and uh, that's the you know that's what I can say about it. It hasn't burned through. It's minimal rust on it, it's, but it is all about taking care of it. Okay, I did not show you everything you could do with the stove. Uh, the video would end up being way too long. I did talk about, obviously, demonstrate it using it in wood. I, obviously, it can be used with wood pellets with that plate. It can be used with charcoal. It can be used with an alcohol stove, multiple, not just the Trangia, but any alcohol stove, really. It's a matter of varying the height until you get it where you need it. It can be used with solid fuels, either something like an Esber tablet or the fuel pucks that, that are sold with the, the uh, uh, scouted or the, uh, the the higher level edition of this thing. Um, yeah, it's a very versatile stove. Like, as I said, keep the instruction book so that you don't miss out on some of the opportunities and play with it. That's what it's all about. Play with it. See what type of thing you can do with this stove. I did say I was hesitant to recommend, actually I won't recommend anybody using that top cover to boil water in. Steve, if you want to correct me, please do, but for me that is made out of tin plated carbon steel, has crevices in it, I might boil water in it if I absolutely had nothing else that I could use, but well, I, you know, is it any different than using an emptied out soup can, I suppose you might say. Um, I wouldn't use that anymore. I did as a youth, I, just, I wouldn't use it anymore knowing what cans are often lined with, so okay, I just put that out there. Tell me your experiences. Do you own this stove? Have you had multiple, multiple fires in it? How has it lasted for you? How's it worked out? Have you had any issues with durability over those multiple fires? I'm really interested in knowing. I asked that once before, and the only feedback I got is I've had 1,000 fires. 
well, I don't know if that's the, what, I, what I recall reading or not, but people had multiple fires in them. I've had multiple fires now. Not a thousand, of course, but I've had 50, maybe. Okay, all the specifications will be in the video description. The links to where you can purchase it on fireboxstove.com will be there as well. Again, please leave your comments, your questions about this stove, and I'll see, do my best to answer them. But in the meantime, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.